All right, I just got word from our uh, TV Technics studio that we are live. Good morning, Zero Project family. Welcome to day three of the Zero Project Conference 2021. I am really excited about this specific partner channel session that we get to start the day with Discovering Hands and Marisa Mühlböck. I want to welcome over 3,500 participants who are with us today at uh, the virtual ZeroCon 21. And we're truly uh, thankful that even in testing times, we're able to bring together and to democratize uh, the conversation around disability inclusion. And Marissa's model is, is especially an interesting one. So I'm very glad that her entire team has been able to dedicate so much resources and effort to this partner channel session. And just a big thank you from the entire Zero Project team. We can't make this conference possible without partners like you, Marissa, really bringing together um, innovative content, sharing this with our global community and our global audience. So from the entire Zero Project team, a big thank you, and the stage is yours. Thank you, uh, Robin. Um, in the name of the Discovering Hands uh, um, uh, team and uh, the project, I'm uh, really happy to host the session um, together with Marissa. And we're really happy that you all are here because you're going to see a project that uh, has developed over time into something that truly special can have a lasting impact in the field of disability employment and um, today so the, the short agenda we're going to have a presentation where we have some uh, discussions on the topic of discovering hands and also we're going to give you the opportunity to um, come uh, together in a discussion with us to have some Q&A time and uh, ask your questions uh, see about the model that discovering hands has implemented that is uh, working uh, very well. It is the first uh, franchise uh, system in the global health care sector, uh, the social uh, franchise, and also it is um, something that um, is, from my side, very interesting because it uses the special talents that people with disabilities obviously have, as we all know, um, in our uh, respecting uh, fields. Um, to use that and have a lasting impact, um, using especially those talents that maybe others don't have. In this um, special uh, field, uh, it's using um, the, the special tactile system of uh, people with uh, visually, uh, visual impairments uh, to detect uh, breast cancer in an early uh, stage and by this um, saving uh, lives and also giving uh, people who have the disability the opportunity to um, be employed in the health sector which normally um, would be uh, difficult or almost impossible to have uh, a job in the healthcare system in this way. They um, successfully implemented uh, the system in Germany and Austria, and uh, right now they're on the way to internal internalization um, so that um, all countries around the world uh, can profit uh, from uh, this system. And I have uh, two um, representatives uh, from uh, Discovering Hands uh, with me. Um, you already heard that Robin uh, talked about uh, Marissa. Dr. Marissa Mühlbock is uh, here with me. Um, welcome, and uh, please uh, describe yourself uh, for the ones uh, who are um, <clears throat> with us but uh, cannot uh, see us. Uh, so the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Andreas, and thank you for facilitating this session. We are doing a hybrid session today, which is uh, special in times like these, and I'm really happy uh, that you are with us. I'm proud that we can be part of the Zero Project conference again. Thank you for the, to the whole Zero Project family for this. And yes, I'd like to describe myself. Uh, I'm a white female in my mid-40s, and I have long, uh, dark blonde hair, and uh, today I'm wearing a pink, light pink shirt. So, uh, <clears throat> thank you for your descriptions. Um, you are um, the former CEO of the Austrian uh, Discovering Hands. You're going to move into um, um, internal... Um, into the internet internationalization of the project so you will have uh, those uh, agendas under um, your uh, topics that you will uh, work uh, for but we also have uh, the founder and the CEO of um, Discovering Hands uh, with us uh, Dr. Frank Hoffman he is uh, remotely uh, with us uh, so Dr. Hoffman uh, please uh, uh, describe yourself uh, for our uh, listeners and uh, the ones who are with us today. Hi Andreas, hi Vienna, I'm calling from Mülheim an der Ruhr in Germany. I'm uh, not as young and not as good looking as Marisa and you, but uh, I'm in my 60s, uh, I uh, wear uh, glasses, I have uh, gray hair, and um, I'm very happy that our audience is with us here today. 
Thank you, uh, Dr. Hoffman. And uh, before we uh, take a deep dive into the project and everything that we will learn uh, today, especially about um, the pathway uh, to getting the project uh, currently to India, Colombia, Mexico, Switzerland, so uh, really across uh, the globe, we would like to present uh, to you Disco um, Discovering Hands uh, to you uh, via a video that we will watch together right now. Kein Ton, Barbara. So we will start the video again. We're trying to fix the sound uh, problems uh, so that we can hear everything. Um, just give us one a second. We will try to uh, fix uh, this. In the meantime, I would like to invite you to use the session chat that um, we have uh, on our uh, Zero Project platform so that you can um, be an integral part of our discussions. And we really would like to know what is the field of interest of your questions to uh, be able to answer them uh, directly. We're trying again with the video. In Germany, over 70,000 are diagnosed every year. For 18,000, it's fatal. Early detection can save lives. A new method uses people with a remarkable ability people who are twice as likely to discover even the smallest anomalies. Blind people. Introducing Discovering Hands. Mein Name ist Frank Hoffmann. Ich bin Frauenarzt und gleichzeitig Sozialunternehmer. Discovering Hands ist ein gemeinnütziges Sozialunternehmen, das den besonders gut trainierten Tastsinn von Menschen mit Sehbehinderung für die Verbesserung der Brustkrebsfrüherkennung nutzt. Das Ziel ist, den Brustkrebs in einem so frühen Stadium zu finden, dass man ihn heilend behandeln kann. Ich untersuche ganz genau die Brust nach Knoten, nach Auffälligkeiten. Ich habe so ungefähr im Schnitt 300 bis 400 Untersuchungen gemacht und sieben Knoten, sieben Auffälligkeiten, die sich auch wirklich als behandlungswürdig gezeigt haben, gefunden. Bei der taktilen Brustuntersuchung durch eine MTU geht es darum, sehr systematisch und strukturiert die Brust abzutasten. 30 bis 50 Minuten dauert die Untersuchung. Sie findet in einer sehr entspannten und sehr angenehmen Atmosphäre statt. Eine erste Studie, die wir zusammen mit der Universitätsklinik in Essen durchgeführt haben, zeigt, dass die medizinisch taktilen Untersucherinnen bis zu 30 Prozent mehr Gewebeveränderungen in der Brust identifizieren, als es die Ärzte bei ihrer Routineuntersuchung tun. Was medizinisch taktile Untersucherinnen besser leisten können als Ärzte, zeigt eigentlich ganz schön diese Kette. Das ist, was Patientinnen finden, wenn sie eine nicht strukturierte Selbstuntersuchung machen. Das ist das, was wir Ärzte finden. Und das sind Tumorgrößen, die medizinisch taktile Untersucherinnen bei ihrer Untersuchung in der Lage sind zu entdecken. Die aktuelle Studie der Universität Erlangen zeigt noch einmal die hohe Patientinnenzufriedenheit. Fast 98 Prozent der Patientinnen würden die Taktilografie ihren Freundinnen und Familienangehörigen empfehlen. 94 Prozent werden die Untersuchung auch in Zukunft selbst wahrnehmen. working in the Discovering Hands project. This is basically a project which was started in Germany by Dr. Frank Hoffman in the year 2005. The project deals with early detection and prevention of breast cancer. This project is mainly for the blind girls. Psychic persons are not included in this project. Blind girls, they have a strong tactile sense. And using their tactile sense, this technique has been adapted where the girls are trained to detect lumps in the breast. And since detection is done early in this technique, a lot of money, time, and life is saved. And moreover, the best feature of this project is it is giving the blind girls completely a new entry into the medical field, which India has never seen till now, other than the physiotherapy part. 
Para mí el sentido del tacto desde que adquirí la discapacidad lo ha sido todo. Las manos son mi instrumento de, de trabajo, son algo para bien de las personas y es una gran responsabilidad. Los sentidos cuando se adquiere una discapacidad se desarrollan al máximo. Entonces yo veo a través de mis manos, a través de lo que escucho, de todas esas texturas, es como yo, yo percibo el, el mundo, percibo ese momento. Fueron meses dedicados que nos llevaron mucho trabajo, pero todo el trabajo era para un fin que estoy segura que no solo para mí, pero es una enfermedad que nos respeta edad, ni clase social, ni la persona. Para mí, pues, ha sido de mucho crecimiento a nivel personal, a nivel profesional, y sobre todo que el método tiene como principal objetivo detectar el cáncer a tiempo, pues también poderle dar el tratamiento adecuado. Esto nos demostró que las personas con discapacidad pueden hacer también o mejor el trabajo que nosotros hacemos. Blindness is no longer a handicap, but a gift, substantially contributing to saving lives. video and a short introduction into what Discovering Hands is and does. We will dive deeper into the history and what they really want to achieve with this project. But this, the one thing that fascinates me is, um, is the, the last sentence that we heard. Uh, heard um, uh, the disability is not longer something that um, is uh, something bad, but it is a gift. It's something that has an impact. It's something that can contribute. It's something that others don't have. And uh, to see disability in this light opens up a lot of uh, chances to uh, do something impactful for people with disabilities, but also for others uh, by uh, detecting uh, cancer in an early uh, stage, uh, especially breast cancer, and by this uh, saving a life. And uh, we will have um, a talk and an interview session right now, but uh, uh, once again, my calling to you, please use the session chat section so that we know what interests you. And of course, you can use the live caption option in Teams, so just activate it so that um, you'll have the live uh, caption uh, for accessibility in the Teams uh, session in the stream. And, um, of course, uh, we will um, uh, call upon um, you to, to be a part of everything that uh, we will uh, do. Um, the video was partly in German, uh, partly in uh, Spain and in English, and it was all, all um, with uh, captions. So if you want to rewatch it, um, it is possible 15 minutes after this session. But uh, right now, uh, let's... Uh, get uh, deeper into um, the history of Discovering Hands. And uh, Dr. Hoffman, I would like to know uh, how did the idea develop and how does it work uh, exactly besides that what we have seen in the video? Thank you, Andreas. And I would like to share some slides to um, um, point out what uh, is the most um, um, Im important fact, you know, that I was working as a, sorry, I just have to see how to manage the, the slides, um, as a gynecologist. And um, I am aware of the fact that it's never the lump inside of the breast, which is the killer for women suffering from breast cancer. It is always the metastasizing cells going to the uh, to the bones, to the liver, to the lung, to the brain. And that means it is very, very important and meaningful to detect breast cancer lumps as early as possible. This graph shows um, what it means to find a tumor in stadium one, which means that from 100 women suffering from breast cancer, after 10 years, more than 90 will uh, be alive. Dr. Hoffman, um, I will interrupt you shortly. We cannot see the slides, so um, thank you. Maybe we will just try to get them on the stream. I just try again. 
now it's working. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you very much. Please continue. Okay. And um, if uh, the tumor is found in stadium four, which means that um, these cells have already reached the body, the chances to survive um, become very, very low. And on the other hand, treatment of breast cancer becomes much cheaper when it's found in an early stage. So the, um, reduce, uh, the reduce, uh, reduction of costs um, uh, counts up to more than uh, 57,000 euro per case. It's um, always the simple ideas that uh, develop the greatest strength. And the very simple idea I had um, more than uh, 12 years ago was to use the uh, superior sense of touch of uh, persons, women um, with the uh, visual uh, impairment uh, to do uh, diagnostical examinations of the female breast. The neuroplasticity of the brain um, leads to, uh, uh, to, uh, to a, a better a tactile sensation. Um, blind people can read Braille, as you know, and these um, MTEs, these medical tactile examiners, uh, women which have undergone our training program, uh, use this sense of touch for early breast cancer uh, detection in a very, very successful way. And they do an examination which takes 30 to 60 minutes, much, much more than uh, uh, we, the doctors, uh, can spend on this examination. And they find up to 50% smaller tumors, and up to 30% more tumors than doctors in the standard examination. We have uh, developed um, the so-called um, orientation stripes. Um, they um, manage um, the, the quality of the examination and they help MTEs to be sure that they have examined each uh, square centimeter of the tissue. So what MTEs are doing is the best possible uh, tactile examination of the breast you can think of. Um, in the video, there was already uh, mentioned um, this chain of wooden balls, and I would like to explain it because maybe it was not so clear uh, from, from the video for people who can see. Um, imagine a, a chain of wooden balls with one uh, wooden ball with an, um, a diameter of 25 centimeters, a uh, millimeter, sorry, uh, 2.5 centimeters. Um, this is what women do find when they do a non-structured self-examination. And there are three balls from uh, one to two centimeters. This is what clinical breast examination done by gynecologists uh, can detect. But if MTEs are doing the examination, um, the tumor size um, is reduced to six to eight millimeters. And that is what makes this tactile breast examination, the tactilography, so important to um, uh, improve the quality of uh, early detection. And this effect is um, as well scientifically proved. Um, there was a big um, um, uh, scientific study done at the University of Erlangen, and it was published in June um, uh, 2019. And it shows that the sensitivity to find Byrd's four and five tumors these are the tumors we want to detect, goes up from 71% um, uh, to 89%. So it increases uh, by a good 20% uh, if MTEs are involved in the process. So I would like to hand over to Marisa. So uh, thank you for explaining and thank you for uh, showing how it uh, works. You used the term MTE. Um, this is the short uh, for medical tactile examiner. Am I right? Right. That's it. That's it. Okay. I mentioned but, the tactile medical tactile examiners are the blind women who have undergone our training program, which uh, includes a six month uh, training phase in a vocational training center and a third three months um, internship. Uh, done in clinic uh, hospitals or uh, uh, medical offices. Um, and after that, they uh, undergo um, a final examination and are certified by Discovery Hands as me medical tactile examiners, MTEs. 
Okay, thank you very much uh, for uh, clarifying uh, this uh, for, for me especially. Um, and thank you for showing us uh, what uh, the thoughts are behind uh, the project. So you implemented uh, this project successfully in Germany and also in Austria. Um, and now the focus is for internationalization. And uh, Marissa is uh, next to me and she will uh, explain to me why focus on the markets worldwide now. Yeah, thank you, Andreas. Well, blindness and visual impairment, as well as breast cancer, are both global issues. It's not just one region in the world that has to deal with uh, such challenges. It's something we have to face worldwide. Let me um, illustrate this fact uh, by some facts and figures. And Frank is assisting me in clicking the slides. Thank you. <laughs> well, Try hard to do my very best. <laughs> uh, we're, we're do you're doing a good job. Thank you. <laughs> As you can see, every year about 1.7 million women are diagnosed with breast cancer and for about 500,000 of them it's fatal. Uh, that's one side. And on the other hand, uh, about 45 million people uh, are affected by blindness and visual impairment. And it's also estimated that around 87% uh, of visually impaired people live in uh, developing countries. And it's also a fact that uh, people with visual impairment are uh, heavily affected economically. Um, yes. uh, yeah, up to 90%, and that's a huge number, uh, are unemployed. And um, this, again, uh, leads to uh, significant social disadvantages to financial insecurity and also to social isolation and this not only in less prosperous countries but also uh, in wealthier ones around the world. And um, next slide please Frank. Um, unfortunately also the COVID pandemic has exacerbated this situation we can see that in, in numerous articles, we can uh, see it in, in the real world. And also um, ILO Director General Guy uh, Ryder has recently pointed out that people with disabilities are among the hardest, uh, among, among those the hardest hit by the virus. And uh, also when it comes to the labor market situation. So, um, these social challenges exist around the world, and as Discovering Hands is tackling these uh, challenges, this is why it makes uh, totally sense to scale up the model worldwide. And that also brings me to our global mission. Uh, next slide, please, Frank, thank you. Um, which is to create social impact on different levels. First, um, by providing people with disabilities with access to the professional healthcare sector, which is usually uh, reserved for sighted people only. And also, and this is really very important to us, um, we strive to prove that people with disabilities are valuable resources and um, that they can unfold their talent uh, if the adequate training and the adequate uh, environment, the organizational environment is provided. And then last but not least, um, we also strive to improve the early detection of breast cancer, of course, we've heard about that before, and also including women with little health literacy. So it means to, to bring together two global problems that we have, the global health problem of breast cancer and the global economic problem of employment, uh, especially in the in the market of uh, visually impaired uh, people. And um, it, it, it sounds to me that <laughs> it is such an obvious uh, solution that, that you have brought together on the way to internationalization uh, now. Um, Dr. Hoffman, uh, what are the achievements on an international level um, so far? What uh, has Discovering Hats already achieved uh, internationally? Well, 
One of the um, extremely beneficial effects is that MTEs can work um, in any given structure of a, a existing healthcare system. MTEs can work in medical offices where one MTE is, is assisting one doctor. They can work in hospitals as a part of the clinic team, and they can um, also work in discovering centers, uh, which means um, maybe six or 10 or one day 20 MTEs are working together under one roof, uh, accompanied by one uh, doctor who is doing the follow-up um, examinations. You have to have in mind that MTEs never walk on their own. They always work in team uh, with a medical doctor because they are doing the examination. They handle over the result to the doctor and the doctor is giving the final diagnosis. So they never uh, are in concurrence with the existing healthcare system, but they support it uh, in a meaningful way. That helped us to um, uh, proof that MTEs can work in different healthcare systems. Um, we have uh, already successfully tested this in different countries, in Austria, in Colombia, in India, and in Mexico as well, as um, it was um, uh, announced already in the, in the uh, introduction. And more than 30 MTEs worldwide have been certified uh, in these countries by Discovering Hands. The achievements are that we now do have more than 80 MTEs trained in six different countries. We have developed a train the trainer concept, which allowed us to uh, also train master trainers, for example, for India, because there the, the project is developing very, um, very quickly. Uh, we do have training materials now in German, in English, in Spanish, in French, other uh, languages uh, to be uh, followed. Uh, 100 participating outpatient clinics and more than 30 health insurers already take over the examination costs in Germany. This could be um, 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 uh, also the, the, the fact one day in other countries, uh, what we uh, really hope. And we do have country offices now in Germany and Austria. Um, because we um, uh, have um, uh, clear uh, proof of concept on the scientific side, and we could uh, test um, successfully that uh, also in other countries and other um, um, social backgrounds, MTEs can be trained. Uh, we got um, many awards and we are very proud that we also got the Civil Society Prize 2017 from the um, uh, uh, European uh, community. And um, this is a very good basis to um, bring the concept uh, to, an another, to another level and um, because uh, in these uh, pilot phase, um, um, uh, in the different pilot phase phases in these different countries, um, uh, sometimes it has the character, let's say, of a test laboratory. But the findings from there now uh, help us to, um, uh, to uh, create a professional support system uh, for the rollout of the model, which is very meaningful, not only in Europe, but all over the world. So there have been steps that have been taken that uh, were uh, successful on the way to internationalization. Uh, Marisa, what is the vision for the internationalization? Um, you, you are in four countries uh, outside of, uh, um, so India, Colombia, Mexico, and Switzerland. Um, I guess this is not it. Uh, you uh, want to reach uh, everyone with this concept. What is the vision? Of course not. Yes, we would like to increase our social impact, as I um, pointed out before. Well, looking ahead, the vision is to have trained, certified, and also employed more than 500 MTEs worldwide in uh, 2030. We also want to fully scale um, the model in the German home market. And then also we envision to successfully implement uh, the Discovering Hands model in the existing international markets like India, Colombia, and Mexico. And uh, also, we would like to replicate it in additional one to two uh, European countries and also additional one to two large non-European markets. And um, to fulfill this vision, we now need to impl implement the global knowledge management platform um, that helps us to ensure that the international 
um, support is there and also to uh, ensure professional knowledge transfer. What uh, would this uh, platform um, look like exactly? What, what, what can we envision if you think about uh, this uh, platform? Well, um, speaking from my perspective, from uh, being head of the Austrian team, I, I, I know what I have wished for uh, at times when we were building the project uh, from scratch. And um, there are so many things. Frank, uh, Frank mentioned before all the scientific proof, um, all the communication issues, uh, Practically in every area of um, entrepreneurship, there is issues that could be shared. I mean, there are success factors um, that we have discovered in India, then others in Colombia, then in Mexico, then in Austria. But if there is no um, uh, interface that is able to assemble all the information and then to, to prepare it properly and share it again to the other countries, so much is lost. And this is this kind of think tank within our organization we need uh, to create in the future. So that uh, teams can profit from uh, the learnings of other teams around the world, from other MTEs uh, around the world. Um, um, you have already um, established uh, the model in, in Germany. Um, Germany is one of the most, most uh, or best managed, uh, maybe in some uh, domains, uh, a little bit over managed uh, health markets um, to be able to, to implement it there. Is this a strong sign that it is possible to implement it internationally as well um, in other markets and in other systems as well? Well, um, about Germany, I mean, Frank is the one who, who can tell us the most, but uh, I think the healthcare sector everywhere in the world is a difficult one in terms of that is really very regulated. And um, it's always difficult to prove that there is something that could enhance the situation. And we have, I think, um, proved and showed that the assistance of an uh, medical textile examiner is something that creates a win-win situation for everybody, uh, but of course it needs a lot of communication and a lot of work to convince all the stakeholders in this healthcare sector in the different countries of the world. So it's kind of a complex endeavor. And uh, for complex endeavors, uh, partners are needed. So going forward, um, I assume you will um, look for partners to help you um, to um, achieve this vision. What are the opportunities for uh, partners or potential partners that would like to partner with you um, in fulfilling this vision and, and achieve those things that you have presented uh, to me? Yeah, honestly speaking, until now, um, the internationalization process did not get sufficient management attention and um, was pursued, I'd say, um, rather opportunistically. I mean, Frank was approached uh, by uh, different uh, individuals and organizations with the wish to implement it in this or that country. And this is how the current pilot projects developed. But it was not, uh, we didn't have the capacities to sufficiently manage that. And only since the beginning of this year, um, we were able to appoint the first members of the dedicated future international team. This is uh, now myself as head of internationalization and my colleague Barbara Ostleit, who is virtually with us today. And I'd like to send her uh, greetings and thank her for the hard work that she has already um, dedicated to, to our project. So, Barbara, we are happy to have you in, t in our team. Um, yes, and of course, with new partners and financial support, um, we could now launch, let's call it the next phase of internationalization or on our path to internationalization. And that would mean to be able to replicate in, and scale in, in further countries. Um, Frank, if you could please uh, click on the slide again so that we can see a little bit more. Yeah, thank you. And our key activities uh, during this phase would be to ensure 
the codification of knowledge and experience that already exists in, 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 in existing countries, as I as I mentioned before, and to develop um, this knowledge management, management platform that we talked about before and the community center for the future countries. Uh, we would also focus on a five-year um, strategy. We need to develop that in order to also prioritize the next countries and um, develop the operational model for each country. And it's also about partner finding and business building in the next uh, countries. And yes, of course, for all these um, tasks and for this endeavor, uh, additional resources are required. So for the next steps, we are looking um, short term for philan uh, 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 philanthropic capital. And then in the future, we could also uh, envision uh, impact investment. But now for the next steps, we really, yeah, are calling out for, for potential partners uh, who say, well, this is really something we would like to facilitate and help to scale up on a, on a global level. Uh, Dr. Hoffman, what is uh, your outlook on uh, partnering and, and the opportunities for potential uh, partners uh, going forward? Uh, first of all, um, I would like to express uh, that I'm uh, extremely grateful that we now do have this very engaged uh, international team uh, with Marisa and uh, Barbara and our supporters in the background. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, we will find um, uh, partners um, around the world to support this model because, um, you know, to support Discovering Hands doesn't mean to support um, a social enterprise. It means to support great people who have special talents and uh, yet are so often only judged on their shortcomings. Um, this is Phyllis Demia. She's working in my medical office and uh, she uh, gave uh, her um, experience and her uh, professional help to many, many women uh, already. And it's about people who can have hope and uh, test for life again because their malignant disease was uh, diagnosed and treated in good time. And that really creates a win-win situation. We employ blind women and we fight breast cancer in a very simple and reachable and meaningful way. And for that, um, everybody who would, uh, would like to be, become a part of this story is hardly invited to join us and to support us and how that could be done and uh, who could uh, be the, the perfect partner this uh, maybe we can discuss in the uh, in the next remaining 20 minutes so uh, thank you dr hoffman uh, thank you uh, marissa for uh, the insights into the model into the vision and everything that um, you're looking to achieve uh, going forward. It was especially powerful to see that um, what you're trying to do is not just to implement a social franchise system in the healthcare sector, but changing lives, lives of people who need to um, need to, to, to find their uh, breast cancer in, in an early stadium. And of course, uh, changing lives for um, uh, mostly women who need to have a job opportunity in the health sector, which otherwise wouldn't have been possible. So to see it, uh, especially on the last uh, slide, uh, um, put like this is just uh, so powerful. And uh, Dr. Hoffman, you have uh, probably uh, talked a lot to, to the women who are helping you um, with the, um, the work uh, on, on the field, uh, to say it like that. Uh, what are um, the reactions of them um, to see that they can um, have an impact and, and save lives with their talents, as you have uh, called them? Yeah, it's always the same experience we, uh, we make. Um, many of them uh, have uh, um, made um, uh, experience with um, being reduced, uh, having lost uh, social contacts, uh, by becoming uh, blind and um, returning to the public more or less by being a MTE means um, to uh, step back into um, uh, a network of uh, many, many people 
in, uh, it is a fully inclusional uh, workplace MTEs find in medical offices. And one of my um, former MTEs told me one day, um, Frank, I cannot go to the world anymore, but this is not so important because now the world comes to me. And that uh, expresses very um, um, uh, impressively uh, how uh, the life perspective uh, of people uh, who are now MTEs has changed and they are um, highly recommended by their patients and it is more than uh, let's say uh, de uh, deli uh, de delivering a, a, a medical service it is more about a relationship between MTEs and uh, their patients and uh, this is uh, again a very important thing I think in my office um, you sometimes hear people laugh inside of the room of the MTE that doesn't happen when they have a mammography or when they are uh, getting a medical um, examination done by doctors. So it is very relaxed and very, um, um, uh, uh, let's say, um, a pleasant atmosphere. Chilly, some people say it's more like um, some uh, wellness <laughs> session than a medical uh, diagnostical uh, um, uh, session, but uh, it is meaningful and it really can help to save lives. So for the pa patients, uh, something that they probably wouldn't have uh, expected. Marisa, you have uh, worked uh, together with uh, uh, probably a lot of uh, patients. Uh, what are your impressions on some of the reactions we have heard? They are very uh, positive, but what, what, what was your personal impression of those reactions for uh, maybe some uh, patients who were skeptical at first to have someone who's blind uh, examine them and uh, then ho hopefully have a, a, a good result with the examination? What were uh, your impressions? Well, there are a lot of individual stories and some of them um, are really touching. Once uh, one of our uh, Austrian MTEs, she told me afterwards, well, I had a patient today and she seemed to be really reserved at the beginning. And my colleague was worried that probably um, she, she had done something wrong, she had said something wrong. Um, and then after the examination was done, uh, the patient opened up to her and she said, well, you would probably not know, or you, can prob you cannot know um, why I was so um, reserved and um, passive during the, the examination, but you cannot know, but my father died recently and um, now that you touched me, oh, and I forgot to mention, during the examinations, she started crying and she explained herself afterwards. And then she said, well, my father died just a few days ago and I was not able to cry, never during the last uh, days. But now that you have touched me, you gave me the opportunity to break free and let the emotions out. And this is just one story and I could continue <laughs> um, and Frank could too, I know. Uh, but that shows that also on the emotional level, something is happening and barriers um, are reduced on, on many levels. Barriers reduced for the blind people because they the, the world comes to them and they have a social network that they never had before, but also for the patients because they are seen on an eye level. The, the, the physical and the social uh, contact, the experience is something that usually in the healthcare sector you never get. Mm -hmm. Because also due to, to time restrictions, such uh, settings such as not possible. So it shows that it's really impactful on both sides. Uh, thank you for elaborating uh, those experiences, uh, Marissa and Dr. Hoffman. Uh, we will now have uh, time for a Q&A session and um, I've asked uh, you all to uh, write your questions into the um, session chat. Uh, we will. We have uh, Barbara uh, with us, uh, she is uh, examining the, the session uh, chat um, and uh, she will type in the questions that you have asked into our um, Microsoft Teams chat so that we, the team, uh, can see it and answer it. So uh, now is the time for that. If you still have uh, questions, uh, please uh, ask them, uh, send them uh, to us. 
on the session chat and we will um, have the opportunity and possibility to direct the questions to Dr. Hoffman or to Marissa. And um, so now is the time for that. We're really looking forward. Um, and um, in, the, in the meantime, until the questions arrive uh, to us, uh, Marissa, how fast can a new country be scaled up? Um, if, if there's a partner who is saying, I want this to happen, I don't know, my, my parents are from Romania, I want this to implement it in Romania, how fast can we implement this system and get the MTEs uh, trained and get the, the, the stations up and running? Uh, how long is, is it taking? Well, you're not the first one who is asking about Romania, actually. <laughs> so maybe we should continue our discussion after this session. Um, uh, we have actually also a slide prepared to showcase how the process is managed. Maybe Frank can assist and uh, show us that. Well, wonderful. This is this is wonderful teamwork. Thank you. <laughs> um, and he can also maybe add some facts, but uh, basically it's a, about 18 months process. And um, before somebody is um, becomes a pilot a project country, this team or this organization that applies has to do a facility um, management, a facility study to prove that they have the ideas and uh, the concept that would allow them to successfully um, complete a pilot phase. And then the pilot phase starts with the train the trainer course. Frank mentioned that uh, before that this concept was thoroughly uh, developed. And uh, when the trainers are trained, uh, the, the first MTE or the MTEs can be trained too which uh, takes about, uh, it's, it's less than a year, nine months. Uh, there's a new concept that is, uh, has been developed now also including uh, online modules. Maybe Frank can elaborate on that a little bit later. And after the MTEs are trained, we also um, uh, try to get test employments for the MTEs so that um, doctors and MTEs can see how a collaboration could work out and so that we also can make sure that there is paid uh, workplaces for, for the MTEs before the, uh, before the country and before the organization uh, get, uh, will be a real franchisee because at the moment we are focusing on a social franchise uh, concept. So Frank, maybe I think you, you, I mean, you are the master behind that all. I think you can uh, probably add some facts on that and some information. Well, um, you can imagine that it was really uh, hard stuff to uh, develop the model, to um, uh, give, uh, make the proof of concept in Germany and parallel to this um, to uh, run different uh, pilot projects around the world. And even if uh, we uh, had a lack of uh, capacities and uh, team capacities and also a financiation, uh, we got uh, to this uh, point we are uh, now on uh, because um, we were supported by uh, wonderful um, and highly motivated uh, teams and people. But now it's the right uh, time to um, to um, professionalize uh, this uh, uh, whole uh, concept. And um, on the other hand, we have uh, gained um, other structures uh, which are very important to uh, set up it in a, a better and, and um, a reachable way, the whole system. Um, our IT uh, backbone is now open for uh, international teams and we have developed a new training concept for MTEs which includes uh, a virtual classroom and that allows us to do trainings uh, also in other countries with trainers from Austria, from Germany, from other countries as well. So we can mix the trainer structures and we can also uh, deliver um, lessons and uh, um, uh, readings to MTE candidates uh, at their home, so they're not uh, necessarily uh, bound to go for six months 
to the vocational training center that can help um, women with children with family um, to uh, do the training um, uh, who uh, would um, haven't had the chance before because they uh, are bound into um, their social structures and couldn't leave home for six months, for example. So you uh, obviously have put, have put some thought into this and the process is designed to um, have the MTEs uh, be ready um, to work and especially in this uh, delicate matter of health, so not just uh, do uh, some short uh, introduction to what they have to do and then just send them to the patients, but have the process and the quality requirements. I see that we have uh, some uh, questions uh, coming in. Um, I will um, just ask them and uh, you two decide uh, who will uh, answer them. Uh, which uh, partners is Discovering Hands uh, looking for in order to implement the model in other countries? Are there any mandatory requirements? So maybe um, answer um, in short, what are the requirements for your partners if they want to approach you? Because uh, Marisa is the head of internationalization, maybe uh, she can uh, point out uh, what uh, would be the, the, the perfect partner for her from, from her uh, wonderful view. Well, this is a, a multiple dimension question because um, it could be directed to which country could be the right partner or it could mean which individual or organization or team in, in, in a specific country. Um, first of all, we will tackle this question of um, categories and prioritization also in the strategy uh, pr uh, process that I mentioned before that will be part of uh, the next phase and will be an important task for us. But um, we have uh, put some thought already in this question. So when it comes to countries, it is um, helpful if in the country breast cancer is already a health priority. Uh, that is for sure. Also, um, it is a good fact if health insurance covers breast cancer screening in general or if patients are uh, used to pay um, for, for screening or uh, for out-of-pocket uh, payments. And also, blind when, if blind people in the country receive some kind of education already, um, this could be something where we could build on because then there are structures in the country where the training concept that Frank has developed could be implemented more easily. But of course, I mean, we can think of everything, but this would help to, um, to, to, to faster scale up uh, in, a, in a country. And, uh, and we maybe I uh, may add that we um, also can think of organizations who already have established um, um, uh, structures in the healthcare systems. For example, a, a hospital chain um, running hospitals maybe in, in, in two or three co uh, different countries. So if this organization would become a franchisee for us, it would be very easy to place MTEs in these given structures and that could uh, allow us to uh, roll out the model uh, uh, much easier and, and faster than uh, in, the, in, in the past. So your system is built on a structure that it can flexibly um, be integrated into existing uh, structures. So one question that is uh, coming up is uh, how does it uh, generate income? I uh, suppose uh, the payments of the patients or the health insurance uh, um, organization of the uh, respective states? Maybe this is something you want to answer? Maybe I can um, share with you how the business model works in Germany. So here you can see that Discovering Hands has developed a curriculum uh, which allows vocational training centers and our own Discovering Hands Academy in Berlin um, um, enabled uh, to train MTE candidates these MTEs later on get a job by Discovering and they are employed uh, by Discovering Hands and Discovering Hands lends these MTEs to uh, medical offices and um, uh, hospitals. Um, even if they also can apply for a job directly there, 
but most of the German MTEs are employed by discovering hands and uh, get their uh, money from there. Um, MTEs are doing the examination. The doctor um, uh, um, collects uh, 46 um, euro 50 for the examination. And um, uh, these 46 euro 50 also cover the price for the orientation stripes, um, which are charged with 10 euros per examination. And this is what goes back to the to Discovery Hands and allows us to finance our um, back office and our structures. And um, uh, this is um, as well uh, um, the beauty of this social entrepreneurial model, because the more MTEs we are able to train, the more uh, women are able to, uh, 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 to be examinated by MTEs, the more um, um, uh, money um, Discovery Hands is uh, gaining uh, as a social um, enterprise. And that means that um, the um, social impact and the economical impact go hand in hand in this model. Well, thank you, Dr. Hoffman, for elaborating on the business model. Thank you for sharing um, all your insight and your vision. We uh, have to wrap it up. Uh, we have to um, uh, come uh, to the finish. Um, we are uh, thank you that we thank you all that you have uh, been with us. You can contact uh, the team on their um, platforms, but also on the Zero Project uh, platforms. And uh, thank you for uh, being with us and uh, showing us the project. All the best, uh, and uh, we will see you in the next sessions.